Welcome to our digital church service from the East Surlington Grounds Methodist Circuit here in the south of England. I'm David Arnott and we thank you for joining us for this service. We hope that you'll take the opportunity with us to listen to God's word, to pray for others and yourself and to worship the living God. If this is your first time watching this channel, we'd like to give you a special welcome. And we pray that wherever you are on your journey of faith, you will find this time helpful. In our Bible reading, we're going to read from St. Luke, and we hear the account of a miraculous catch of fish. Listen now to some verses from the set psalm for Sunday the 6th of February, a psalm of thanksgiving and praise. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exhorted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfil his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures for ever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. We sing our first hymn, a hymn of praise. Alleluia, sing to Jesus. Thank you. 
in silence, we recall our sins, our errors, our failure to love as we should, friends, family, neighbours, our world and our God, who is love. Together we say, Almighty God, your majesty is beyond imagination. The eternal King, high and lifted up, whom the angels worship. Your power is beyond understanding. The Creator God, who shakes the heavens, yet holds us in his hands. Your mercy is beyond our deserving. The Saviour God, once born for us, sacrificed in love. Forgive the smallness of our faith, the magnitude of our need, the depth of our sorrow. Heavenly Father, in the confidence of your sons dying and rising to set us free, we ask that you will raise us up to new life and new ways of service. In his name we ask it. Amen. To all and to each, where regret is real, God pronounces pardon and grants us the right to begin again. Amen. Thanks be to God. As we prepare to listen to our Bible reading, we pray. Father, as we read and hear your word, let us hear your voice speaking to us. Give us wisdom to understand your message to us. Let your word be the joy of our hearts and a light to guide us on our journey of faith. Give us strength to build our lives on your word. Amen. Our Bible reading comes from St. Luke, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding round him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats, left there by the fishermen, who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he'd finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signalled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he 
and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Our Bible reading, like many of the Gospel accounts, was an event that happened on or near Lake Galilee. The Lake of Galilee is an inland sea, about eight miles long, and at its broadest point, five miles wide. It's several hundred feet below sea level. It's surrounded by high hills and there are small villages around its shores. Being so low, it usually is warm and has an abundance of fish. It's always been the centre of a thriving fishing industry, carried out by small boats working in family groups or small village community partnerships. Fishermen on the Sea of Galilee often used nets, often bell-shaped ones, with lead weights around the edges. A net would be thrown flat across the water, and the weights would cause the net to sink down around the fish. Then the fishermen would pull on a cord, drawing the net around the fish. Nets had to be kept in good condition so they would be washed to remove weeds and mended. This is what Simon and the other men were doing at the start of our reading. Imagine yourself in that fishing boat, a little way off the beach, bobbing on the waters of the lake. Jesus is standing on the shore and he's talking. He's teaching a crowd of people that surround him. You are Peter. What are you thinking? Are you focused on hearing Jesus whilst you clean your nets? Or perhaps you're rather preoccupied? Preoccupied with a rather more pressing need. Last night you were out all night. You'd worked, but caught nothing. Failure. Valuable hour after valuable hour passed by. But nothing to sell, nothing to eat. And now you are tired and frustrated. But you do know something of Jesus. You've seen how he healed the sick and driven out demons. And you heard him teaching in the synagogue with amazing authority. In fact, unlike anything you've heard before. So now you look up and you listen to Jesus and hear the compelling stories and wonder at his intimate knowledge of God. What happens next in our scene? Maybe the crowd increased, or the tide was coming in. So Jesus steps into the boat, sits down and resumes his teaching. All right until now. But then we read that Jesus tells Peter to sail into deep water and let down the nets. Peter briefly protests, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But then Peter agrees. 
What was the result of following Jesus' instructions? Just too many fish caught for one boat and crew to handle. Jesus directed the fishermen with authority to the riches which were below the surface of the lake, to a feast where just a few hours before they had caught nothing. What was Peter's response to the wonderful catch of fish? It is with awe and amazement he falls on his knees. In the presence of Jesus' greatness, he recognises his own unworthiness. What happened to the load of fish? We don't know. But I do like to think that they gave the fish to the other fishermen. Simon and the other men went with Jesus. They went with Jesus to follow him. But they did not know where they were following, either that day or for the next three years. But they were to be following Jesus for the rest of their lives. They'd found abundance once. Perhaps they knew they would find it again, so long as they stuck close to their new friend. In the Gospels of Mark and Matthew, when the dis first disciples are called, they leave their father, their nets, their boat and their livelihood. But it is only Luke who stresses that they left everything. You may like to look at these verses again in the next few days and consider what we can learn from these verses. But here are a few thoughts. Firstly, Simon Peter was amazed that Jesus cared about his day-to-day -day routine and understood his needs. God is interested both in saving us and helping us in our daily activities. Secondly, on our Christian journey of faith, there are times of emptiness or frustration or confusion or disappointment. When our activities, however focused, and however much effort we put in, are just not bearing fruit. Or it seems that something is not as it should be. At these times, we need to be particularly attentive in our listening to God, so that we can recognise when he is speaking to us. We may need to stop our busyness and take time to absorb his presence. This may lead us to being prompted to take a change of direction. You see, a familiar project, task, location, relationships or situation can be a barrier to seeing new possibilities. Shifting our focus to Jesus will be the key to seeing a way forward. This might mean leaving behind for a while or altogether some things, some of the things we have been familiar with and moving on to new situations, new challenges. Thirdly, and finally, as I read through those first few verses of Luke 5 again, I noticed something new to me. Jesus says, put out to deep water and let down your nets for a catch. I checked various Bible versions 
and yes, they vary slightly in wording. But all said deep. We may be asked to put out into the deep, but we are to trust, trusting whatever might come next for God's abundant provision. We thank you, our God and Father, that we can come to you. We can come to you with our praise, with our thanks, with our confessions of sin, with our burdens and cares, and with our needs and disappointments. We thank you that we can come to you because you care for us, but also because the way is open to us because your Son, the Lord Jesus, has died so that our sins can be forgiven. And on the basis of his righteous life, we can be accepted by you. We praise you for your word, for every opportunity we have to read it, and hear it preached. We pray that as we hear your word, we will hear Christ speak to us. We thank you that his voice is powerful, 
powerful to wake up those who are dead in their sins and transgressions and bring them to new life. And that his voice has authority to lead and guide us along paths of holiness. May we continue to make the most of every opportunity we have to hear him speak to us. Lord, we praise you for the good things that you give us to do, for the work we have before us each day. Help us to be diligent and faithful in our tasks, seeing them as being done for you. Give energy to those whose labour is exhausting. Give concentration to those whose calling demands focus. Give patience to those who interact with different people all day. Give protection to those whose job is dangerous. Above all, may we be a blessing to those we work for and work with. Thank you for all the ways in which you provide for our needs and we ask that you will continue each day to give us our daily bread. We thank you for every opportunity you give us as a church, individually and together to make Christ known. Help us, if we are feeling weary, to carry on. Help us, if we are downcast, because we are not seeing much growth from our efforts, to keep going and keep being guided by the Word of God. Help us to leave the outcomes with you and depend on your goodness. We would dearly love to see many come to Christ, but if for a time we've caught nothing, let us not lose heart. Let us seek your will at all times, in prayer, Bible study and reflection. Let us be prepared to be guided by your Holy Spirit. Amen. Maybe that you've been watching this program and listening to the words and think that something is missing in your life, something Christians have. What is missing? Maybe it's a lack of hope, a loss of purpose or confidence in the future. All these come down to a relationship, your personal relationship with God. The way to that personal relationship to God is through Jesus. Jesus who is the way, the truth and the life. And the way to enter into that personal relationship was illustrated in the story we had from Luke chapter 5 of Simon Peter. First, like Peter, there's a need to recognise our sinfulness, the wrong things in our lives that separate us from God, God who is love. St Luke draws out the truth that awareness and acknowledgement of sin is a primary prerequisite for being called to be a follower of Jesus. Second, like Peter, we must admit that we cannot save ourselves. Third, we are to have faith in Jesus as Saviour, who on the cross of Calvary took upon himself our sin, our failings, and mistakes. In our reading, Jesus established his authority, 
his authority in the lives of Peter and the other men. He met them on their level and helped them with their work. From that point on, they left their nets and remained with him. Peter recognised that he was a sinner. He recognised that Jesus had authority. And for us, following Jesus means more than just acknowledging him as Saviour. We must also leave our past behind and commit our futures to him. Yes, letting go of everything and following him. It is worth it. Your life will be transformed on your journey of faith.
Thank you so much for joining us and we do hope that you found this time helpful. If you'd like to contact us, there are details on the final screen of the programme. We come to our final prayer. Heavenly Father, we know that it's not enough to proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord and King. We know our mission in life is to make his kingdom a reality among us and bring it to those around us by our words and deeds. We pray that our lives will reflect the way Jesus lived on earth, living for others in love and service. Amen. The love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Thank you.